another video for you with some new stories from Ethiopia and Eritrea. Firstly, we will have a detailed look at uh, Stephen Walker's uh, interview. He, Stephen Walker is uh, US shock de affairs in Eritrea. He is uh, in charge of uh, US Embassy in Eritrea in Asmara. And we know that US Embassy in Eritrea is very vocal against uh, uh, human rights abuses, against religious uh, persecution and other uh, issues in Eritrea. Stephen Walker was invited by an Eritrean opposition media group for an interview uh, for uh, to be part of a Zoom meeting. And it was being said that uh, as an ambassador, as a shock affairs, he should not attend this uh, program, but he was there. Virtually, he uh, attended the program hosted by an Eritrean opposition media group based in the US, I think. Which questions were asked? What did uh, Stephen Walker say? Does the US want regime change in Eritrea? Is US providing assistance, humanitarian assistance uh, in indirect way in Eritrea? What is US position about Eritrean sovereignty in case of an attack on Eritrea? Uh, what is US position about Budman dispute between uh, Tigray and Eritrea? Will US back any democratic forces uh, that want change in Eritrea? Several important questions. What did he say? We will have a detailed look at uh, his appearance there. A second story is from Amhara region of Ethiopia where we know that uh, a crackdown is underway against uh, Fano, Fano supporters, uh, activists, journalists critical of the government, of the government's operation against Fano and reportedly in a prison dozens of prisoners have gone on hunger strike. Uh, thirdly, we have a new story from Tegarai. Uh, yesterday, Le Monde, a French newspaper, published uh, an article claiming that Tegarai had abandoned its claim to Western Tegarai and Tegarai Ethiopian government talks were about to start in Tanzania in coming days. We were waiting for an official statement from Tigray government. Now, Tigray government has released an official statement. Uh, what is Tigray government's position on Western Tigray? Will there be talks in Tanzania? Will Tigray be part of talks? What is Tigray government's position on Obasanjo, African Union's mediator? Because uh, today I talked to uh, an analyst from the Horn of Africa, Rashid. Rashid was saying that uh, Tigray might not join uh, the peace process uh, in uh, Tanzania. Uh, I disagreed with him. Uh, he was saying that. Uh, Obasanju was not the right man to lead mediation process. What did a Tigray uh, government say in its statement about Obasanjo, the mediator? Uh, firstly, viewers, very important news story. Stephen Walker is US shock de affairs uh, of US embassy in Asmara, Eritrea. He was invited by Irisat. Irisat is uh, an Eritrean opposition media outlet. It has a satellite channel, a YouTube channel, I think a Facebook page as well. Uh, this uh, opposition media group has organized an online, a virtual event. Several speakers are speaking. I think uh, when we recording this video, the symposium is still uh, going on. But uh, Stephen Walker has finished his talk. 
he replied to questions uh, praised by participants and by the host of the program as well. Uh, what did he say about uh, US policy on RRT? Firstly, he said that uh, US opposed uh, RRT and independence in 1951. It is said that uh, U.S. was against uh, disintegration of uh, Ethiopia. But after Eritrean independence, U.S. Uh, had good relations with Eritrea. And the two countries should not look backwards. They should uh, look towards the future. Then he talked about uh, 2001. In 2001, there was crackdown on pro-democracy voices in Eritrea, journalists, politicians uh, who were speaking uh, for democracy, they were put in prison. He called for their release. He talked about Badme. He supported uh, the decision, Boundary Commission's decision on Badme, which ruled in favor of Eritrea against Iran. He said, uh, the decision should be implemented. He was asked a question about Russian and Chinese uh, presence and their plans uh, to have their presence in Eritrea. What is the US position? He did not uh, oppose. Uh, he said that uh, uh, each African country, each and every African country has a right as a sovereign country to make decisions about their foreign policy. But he showed surprise at uh, Eritrean backing of uh, uh, Russia uh, at uh, Union Rights Council, Union General Assembly sessions when Eritrea voted uh, for Russia. He was asked a question about uh, humanitarian assistance. Why is that uh, uh, Eritrea is not uh, providing aid to Eritrea? He said that uh, USAID was banned from working in Eritrea. Eritrea has not asked for any aid from US. But US is indirectly supporting Eritrea. UNHCR is working in Eritrea. It's working in neighboring countries as well where there are Eritrean refugees. And uh, US funds UNHCR. UNHCR is United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Secondly, he said that two NGOs working in health sector in Eritrea are funded by the US. So indirectly, U.S. government is supporting the people of Eritrea in Eritrea and abroad as well. A question was asked, uh, will the U.S. support regime change in uh, Eritrea? Will uh, U.S. support uh, pro-democracy voices? He said, the future of Eritrea is for Eritreans to decide. So it, it means that he rejected the possibility of U.S. backing any regime change in Eritrea. And he further said that uh, uh, U.S. respected Eritrean sovereignty while uh, tensions are arising. I think he was referring to Tigray Eritrea tensions here. He was asked a question about uh, destabilizing role of Eritrea in the region. What is U.S. doing? He said U.S. impose sanctions. Uh, U.S. Uh, is engaging with Eritrean government. And he said that last year when U.S. appointed special envoy for the Horn of Africa, Jeffrey Feldman, Jeffrey Feldman visited Asmara. Jeffrey Feldman was the first U.S. Uh, envoy to the Horn of Africa. He was followed by David Satterfield and uh, these days Mike Hammer is the new U.S. Envoy of the Horn of Africa. Jeffrey Feldman, who was the first envoy, he traveled to Asmara. He met with Isaiah Sehwaki. It was confirmed by Stephen Walker today. So he says that uh, 
US is trying to engage uh, Iranian government, it has imposed some sanctions as well. Uh, so, it is doing what it can to stop Eritrea from playing a destabilizing role in uh, the region. He opposed uh, unlimited national service, that there should be duration, a specific duration of national service. He mentioned religious uh, uh, persecution in Eritrea. He reiterated US position that uh, evangelicals, Jehovah's Witnesses uh, are not registered. They are not allowed to worship freely in Eritrea. So, he talked about several important points uh, in his uh, talk with Eri uh, Sat, opposition media group. Uh, and Irisat asked a question that uh, he could be declared persona non grata by Eritrean government because he was uh, uh, being interviewed by an Eritrean opposition media group. He said that uh, there is, uh, he said there is uh, Eritrean shock affairs in US as well. He can talk to US uh, people. He can speak about any topic, any problem in the US. And lastly, he thanked uh, the group Erisat and he said that he uh, will keep on working. It was an honor for him to work in Eritrea. Uh, overall, what he said uh, in his talk, uh, it's not something new. In his Facebook posts, in the material shared by U.S. Embassy in Asmara uh, in past uh, posts, we have seen this position of uh, U.S. government about the issues which came under discussion uh, at uh, this program. Let us see, how will Eritrean government respond to? Will some action be taken against uh, Stephen Walker? Will he be declared persona non grata? Uh, I don't know about other actions, but I think that uh, uh, Eritrean Information Minister Yemane Gabriel will definitely comment. Uh, he has special love for uh, Stephen Walker. So, in coming hours, uh, we could see uh, some post uh, from uh, Yemane Gabriel a second new story is from uh, Amhara region of Ethiopia viewers where a campaign, a disarmament campaign against Fano militia is underway and Fano supporters are also being arrested, journalists, activists are being detained. Uh, we have a new story from Nifas Micha, Nifas Micha town, there is prison there and in Nifas Micha Reportedly, dozens of prisoners have gone on hunger strike. Uh, earlier, we reported uh, about uh, Sintajay Chikol, Baldiras party leader, who also went on hunger strike, uh, I think, three days ago. These prisoners say that they are being kept in prison without any charges, without any court order. They have been detained and now they are not being taken to any court. They have this right that they should be taken to a court. The court should make decision about their detention or their bail. So, their basic rights are being denied. That is why these dozens of prisoners in Nifas Micha prison, they have gone on hunger strike. Let us see. Uh, will these prisoners be taken to courts? Uh, if they are taken to courts, they could be released as well. Like we, we have seen that uh, Fira Mamu has been released, though very serious allegations uh, were leveled against him by the police. Still, he was released. Uh, last review was very important news story. We were waiting for an official statement from Tigray government uh, because. Uh, Yesterday, Le Monde, a French uh, newspaper, published an article. Uh, the article claimed that uh, Tigray and Ethiopian governments were about to start negotiations 
with the mediation of Obasanjo African Union in Arusha, Tanzania at the end of this month, June. And Le Monde further claimed that Tigray uh, had agreed to abandon its claim to Western Tigray. Uh, we had a video on that, that uh, Le Monde's uh, claim was uh, inaccurate. Uh, he, uh, the, the, new, the new source might have been misled. Le Monde had said that uh, some diplomats based in Addis Ababa uh, had said that Tigray had abandoned its claim. So, that is why an official statement from Tigray was awaited. Now, Tigray has released a statement, Tigray External Affairs Bureau. Tigray says that Western Tigray is non-negotiable. There is no question of Tigray abandoning its claim because this zone is integral part of Tigray. Amhara region is making false claims that after 1991, the region became part of Tigray. Tigray government says that there was no Amhara region before 1991. This region is part of Tigray. Amhara forces Eritreans will have to withdraw from Western Tigray. Peacefully or through military means, Tigray will take back Western Tigray. Very much clear. That is what I have been saying, that uh, Tigray will not abandon its claim to Western Tigray. What did Tigray say about uh, expected talks in Tanzania? No word, no mention of talks. It means that Tigray is not rejecting the possibility of upcoming talks. Talks could be held. So, Limonde's story is partially true, that talks could be held in coming days in Tanzania. What did Tigray government say about Obasanjo? Because today I was talking to Rashid, uh, Rashid Abdi, analyst in Horn of Africa, who said that uh, Obasanjo was not the right man and Tigray could uh, decide against uh, joining Obasanjo led talks in uh, Tanzania. Rashid was backing. Uh, talks in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, now, Tigray seems to be backing Obasanjo-led mediation. In the statement, Tigray government acknowledges the contribution made by Obasanjo, Olisogon Obasanjo, towards peaceful resolution of Tigray conflict. It means Tigray is not rejecting or it is not raising questions about Olisogon Obasanjo. Uh, we can sum up that uh, talks could be held in coming days. Tigray has not abandoned its claim to Western Tigray. There could be some give and take, there could be some, uh, uh, I say joint control, people do not like it, but it could happen. But Tigray will never abandon its claim that uh, entire Humra Vulkai Sagade should be part of Amhara region. It will not happen. If it happens, Tigray will always remain under siege. Tigray wants at least one border with a friendly neighbor and that is Sudan.